For today's adventure, we're gonna go from this to this. I'm gonna start by masking off the baffle. What I wanna do is I wanna paint this plywood edge right here black. Okay, while that's drying, I'm gonna move on to the next step, the edge banding. I'm gonna use some of this stuff right here. This is a birch edge banding. It's an iron-on. It has this adhesive on the back, and the idea is you just iron it on here on the edges and it'll cover up the plywood edge and it'll look like a solid piece of birch, in theory. Uh, don't tell my wife that I know how to use one of these. Okay, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I, I'm really happy with the way this looks. Now they sell special cutters you can use to trim this. I don't have one. I cheaped out and didn't get one. Um, I do have one on order in case I do this again. And I'm wishing I had one because this is gonna be a pain to get it to look good. This build is a ton of fun. I'm totally stoked about it. You're not gonna to wanna to miss any of this. Make sure you keep watching. I'm gonna cover this with a clear coat. Before I do that, I've gotta sand it down with some 220 grit sandpaper. I can use the power sander for everything except for the front. And there's just too much detail work there. So I've gotta grab some sandpaper and do that by hand. For the clear coat, I'm using Minwax Polycrylic. You just put a coat on, sand it with 220, and repeat that several times until you get the look that you want. I'm gonna do most of that off camera so you don't have to watch paint dry. Okay, so I've got several coats with the poly on it now. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I've got a few little spots where I didn't get good coverage. I'll have to go back off camera and hit those, make sure they look nice. Now I've got to work on the back and the bottom of the enclosure. Now the back and the bottom, no one's gonna see it, so I'm gonna do that a little bit differently. So let me turn it around here, and we'll talk about the back just a little bit. So the amplifier is gonna go right here, of course, and I've got a few holes from the pocket holes. Now, there are several ways you can fill the pocket holes. They make special plugs. You can fill them with Bondo or wood putty. I'm just gonna paint the thing black and leave the pocket holes exposed. Now, I'm not gonna do any edge banding on the lip down at the bottom. I'm gonna cover that with a black textured coating. What I'm shooting for is contrast, because I think a high contrast looks nice. Okay, so I've got things masked off a little bit here, and I'm gonna be using this textured coating. It's called Duratex. Uh, Parts Express sells it. I'll give you some links down in the description. I like the Duratex because when you buy a can, they throw in one of their fancy textured rollers. So this is just a plastic container that held lunch meat. And I saved these because they're so handy to have them for this kind of thing. And it fits the textured roller just, just perfect. Uh, the stuff's really thick. Um, the word I would use is gloopy. Like any paint product, it's Messy as all get out. And you just paint it on with the textured roller. You can use two coats, you can do one coat. I'm probably gonna do two coats. I actually really like this stuff. It's one of my favorite ways to finish a speaker. Just because it's just so easy to use. I, I, it's basically idiot proof. I prefer this to, um, 
bed liner because bed liner can have this sandpaper consistency and this still smooths the touch. Okay, so I'm really happy the way this is turning out. You can see right here, this, this dark edge is going to provide some real high contrast against the light colored birch. Now, while that's drying, takes about 30 minutes to dry, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to uh, add a little constrained layer dampening. Now, this is completely overkill. I've got plenty of internal bracing. Absolutely nothing wrong with throwing a little bit of extra constrained layer dampening material into the box when you're done. So this is some polyfill, this is quilt batting, and so it's just basically in a sheet. And so I'm gonna take some of this and staple it to the sides of the enclosure. Coming up next is my absolute favorite part of any project. But before I show you that, I gotta give a shout out to these guys right here. These are some of my patrons over on Patreon. And I wanna give a special shout out to my newest patron, Lee. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your help. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, you'll get all kinds of cool extras. Check out the links down in the description. And if Patreon's not your thing, hey, hit that like button. You can show your support that way. So the paint's all dry, so now I get to do one of my favorite things, and that's pull the tape off and do the big reveal. Like I said, this coating is idiot proof. It always comes out fantastic. I'm just gonna start covering all my speakers with it. Now for the amplifier, I'm gonna be using a plate amp that I got from Parts Express. I'll give you some links down in the description. I always pre-drill my holes. I recommend that you do the same. Now, a lot of people worry about poking a hole in the surround. I don't worry about that. I am just try to be real careful. And again, this is a subwoofer I've had laying around the house for five years. And so if I did poke a hole in the surround, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Hey guys, what do you say we give this thing a test bump before you move it upstairs to its final resting place? I couldn't be happier with the way this build turned out. It is loud, it is clean, and it looks magnificent. And hey guys, you're gonna to wanna to catch the rest of the build videos and they're right here in this playlist. So click right here to catch that. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there and I will see you on the next adventure.